The Hawker Sidley Harrier is powered by a single engine, the Rolls-Royce Pegasus, which delivers its thrust through four rotatable nozzles in the sides of the fuselage. The four nozzles are mechanically linked and the pilot rotates them by moving the nozzle selector lever, his only additional flying control. For conventional flight, the nozzle selector lever is fully forward and the engine nozzles are pointing aft. For vertical flight, the lever is pulled back to the hover stop, which rotates the nozzles down to about 90 degrees. Intermediate nozzle angles are used for short takeoffs. The nozzles can also be rotated a few degrees forward past the vertical to give reverse thrust. Short takeoffs are used for maximum war loads. After a short run, the nozzles are rotated downwards and the Harrier lifts off by a combination of wing lift and jet lift. The all up weight of the aircraft determines the speed and the nozzle angle required. For this particular sortie, the required speed is 90 knots and the nozzle angle 60 degrees. The pilot presets this angle by means of a stop. The nozzle lever itself is kept fully forward. All checks complete, full power. At 90 knots, nozzle lever back to the stop. The nozzles rotate and the aircraft lifts off. Now move the nozzle lever slowly forwards, rotating the nozzles to the horizontal position and accelerating the Harrier into wing-borne flight. At the end of a sortie, with weapons gone and fuel load reduced, a vertical landing can always be made. In this instance, the landing area is a bombed runway and the pilot makes a rolling vertical landing in which the aircraft is kept moving forwards to ensure that all debris is left behind. Prior to a vertical landing, the pilot makes a decelerating transition. The nozzle selector lever is drawn fully back to rotate the nozzles to the reverse thrust position. The airspeed falls away very quickly and as it does so, the pilot opens the throttle to compensate the decreasing wing lift with increasing jet lift. As the airspeed falls to zero, the pilot inches the nozzle selector lever forward to the hover stop. The throttle has now become the height control. Heading is controlled by the rudder, roll and pitch by small natural movements of the stick, exactly as in conventional flight. To initiate the vertical landing, the pilot reduces the power slightly and controls the rate of descent with the throttle. For a short landing, the pilot will reduce both height and speed during the final stages of the transition using both wing lift and jet lift to touch down at a moderate forward speed. Before starting a vertical takeoff, the pilot moves the nozzle selector lever to the hover position. He opens the throttle to full power and the aircraft lifts off. Under carriage up, now move the nozzle selector lever gradually forwards and the Harrier accelerates into wing-borne flight. Flying the Harrier is not difficult. The principles remain the same, whatever the environment, and pilots find they can operate with as much ease at sea as they do on land. <laughs>